For many business owners, decoupling from China won't be easy, but they should start preparing now because China may no longer be the world's factory in the future. The first signs of this have become evident by the end of 2022. Exports are one of the main drivers of China's economic growth. Lower exports are bound to affect foreign trade and the Chinese economy. An article published by China's official media, the Chinese National People's Congress magazine, in 2019 before the pandemic estimated that foreign trade directly and indirectly drove the employment of around 180 million people, accounting for more than 20% of China's total employment. China's exports are now at a historic turning point. China Customs released its November statistics on December 7, 2022. In dollar terms, exports fell 8.7% year-over-year in November, the largest single monthly decline since February 2020 when imports fell 10.6%. In October 2022, China's exports fell 0.3% and imports fell 0.7% year-over-year, the worst since May 2020 for both exports and imports. Surveys of factory activity conducted by China's National Bureau of Statistics and Caixin.com in October found that data for export orders has shown a continuing downward trend, signaling that China's exports have fallen into a prolonged slump. As such, China's exports to major countries are experiencing a significant decline. Among the major export destinations for Chinese products, China's exports to the U.S. in November 2022 amounted to U.S. $40.8 billion, a drop of up to 25% compared to last November's exports of U.S. $54.7 billion. On a year-over-year basis, China's exports to the U.S. fell for the second consecutive month in November, down 14% compared to U.S. $47 billion in October this year. Meanwhile, China's merchandise exports to the European Union in November this year amounted to U.S. $44.8 billion, down 10.6% compared to U.S. $50.1 billion in November last year. Among them, China's exports to Germany, the Netherlands, France, and Italy all fell year-on-year. In addition, in November this year, the value of China's exports to Japan, South Korea, and Taiwan fell by 5.6%, 12%, and 20% year-on-year respectively. According to a December 4th report by U.S. financial website CNBC, U.S. manufacturing orders in China fell 40%, which may have forced Chinese factories to start their Chinese New Year holidays two weeks early. According to China Business Network, at the end of November, the last two months of the year are usually hectic for Chinese garment and textile factories as they rush to deliver orders and prepare for the next year's procurement. But it's not the case in 2022. Many garment and textile factories are, to the contrary, preparing for an early holiday. The person in charge of a foreign trade manufacturer of bathrobes and other homeware told China Business Network that his company is still focusing on foreign trade in 2022. But next year, it plans to make a significant shift from foreign trade to domestic sales and become a domestic sales-oriented company. Our channel has reported many times on the situation of factories closing down and workers losing their jobs in China. This is a clip from an episode two months ago. Now so many machines are down, no foreign trade orders. You see only a little bit of sample garments. We just took a few pieces of garments to work on. There is not much work, nothing to do. Now we don't feel good. The last foreign trade orders are suspended. Clients said pause and have suspended their orders. Just now, I went to see the factory. It isn't busy. There isn't much to do. It's just the boss and his wife sitting there by themselves. Not even a single worker there. It feels like a bad year. All industries feel like this. My friend said that his factory was going to have a three-month holiday. Alas, I really don't know what to do. I only have very little money to live on. So, what is causing the decline in China's exports? Is it only short-term? The most obvious reason is the impact of high inflation represented by rising food and energy prices due to the ongoing COVID-19 outbreak and the Russian-Ukrainian war. Central banks in several countries have raised interest rates to curb inflation, which has also curbed the people's demand. For example, the U.S. was China's largest exporter in the first 11 months of the year. 
In the first 11 months of 2022, China's exports to the U.S. totaled the U.S. $536 billion, exceeding U.S. $518.4 billion to the EU and U.S. $515 billion to ASEAN. U.S. retail and food services sales fell 0.6% in November, twice the expected decline and the largest drop of the year. The impact of weaker consumption in the U.S. would be very significant for Chinese exports. In addition, the U.S. Department of Commerce released its U.S. manufacturing and trade inventories data for October on December 15th. They were up 0.3% in October from September and up 16.5% from October last year. With the increased inventories, demand for imports will naturally fall back. A second important reason for the decline in China's exports is the extreme zero-COVID policies implemented by the CCP and repeated lockdowns in various parts of the country over the past three years. They have resulted in disruptions in transportation and supply chains. Occasionally, forced shutdowns or production cuts in factories have led to huge losses in China's manufacturing sector. In addition, the large pool of educated and skilled workers has been the backbone of China's role as the world's factory. However, according to the World Bank, China's labor force has been declining since 2020. On December 7, 2022, the CCP abruptly and without warning abandoned its three-year zero-COVID policy in an attempt to stimulate the economy, only to be confronted with a massive outbreak and its extremely rapid spread. Neither the Chinese nor the outside world have any idea of the direction of the CCP's arbitrary policy. This is a high-speed rail from Beijing to Shanghai after lifting the restrictions. From here, it looks like there is nobody there. I have been riding the high-speed rail for a long time. Even during the peak of the epidemic, when things were at their worst, I have never seen such a dramatic scene. No one is there. The cars are empty. It's really shocking, shocking. So there must be a sense of fear. It has affected people's travel. Otherwise, it wouldn't be so bad. There isn't much flow of people, and almost all the cars are empty. I am scared to go further. As you can see, it's all empty. This is the situation of the rail from Beijing to Shanghai. The third reason why China's position as a world factory is unstable in the long run is that the perception of China in the West, led by the U.S., is changing, and various governments are making strategic adjustments. For over a century, this council has been one of the most important venues for discussing the critical foreign policy issues facing our nation and the world, and it is a pleasure and an honor to be here with you today. On December 19, 2022, U.S. Trade Representative Catherine Tai told a forum at the Council on Foreign Relations, a U.S. think tank, that the Biden administration would continue to press Beijing on state-centered and non-market trade practices. Speaking about Beijing's trade policies, Tai said, The loss of jobs, income, and manufacturing capabilities that accompanied a surge in low-price imports from China has been real and devastating. For too long, the PRC's unfair policies and practices undercut American prosperity, suppressed labor rights, and weakened environmental standards. In conversation with the moderator, Tai highlighted the long-standing adverse impact of the CCP on the global economy. China's growth and development, particularly over the past 20 years, has profoundly changed the global economy, and it's created stresses and distortions that we need to correct, she said. There is a framework that guides how we must manage this economic relationship responsibly. Tai said Washington will recalibrate its trade policy with China to protect the interests of American workers, businesses, farmers and producers. She added, With China, we need a new playbook that meets our interests. The U.S. is looking for more options through the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework to gain economic resilience in a region where supply chains are closely integrated with the Chinese economy. The outlook for China's foreign exports is becoming increasingly bleak. The U.S. is seeing a decline in demand on the one hand and a return of U.S. manufacturing in a conscious shift of orders to countries other than China on the other. And this is not only the attitude of the U.S. With a decline in demand for Chinese orders, the U.S. has instead boosted imports of European goods. 
In a December 4th CNBC report, according to a supply chain research firm, Project 44, the U.S. imported more goods from Europe than China in 2022, with German exports to the U.S. alone up nearly 50% year-over-year year in September. In the first nine months of 2022, Germany's mechanical engineering industry boosted exports to the U.S. by nearly 20% year-over-year. Project 44's Vice President Josh Brazil believes that the epidemic is not the main reason for the sharp rise in U.S. imports from Europe and that its main cause is that both European countries and the U.S. want to pull away from their overdependence on China and on Russia. European manufacturers, trapped by high energy prices and high inflation, are increasingly exporting and investing in the U.S., he said. According to a survey of 100 Japanese manufacturing companies conducted by Nikkei in mid-November, more than half of the companies surveyed said they would scale back their supply chains in China due to the impact of extreme Communist Party prevention and the situation in the Taiwan Strait. About 60% of Japanese companies surveyed in the machinery, automotive, and chemical industries said they would reduce their purchases in China. With the weakening of China's world factory status, which countries can fill some of the gaps? India and Vietnam should be two of them. Let's use Apple as an example. Bloomberg reports that data analysts at research firm Counterpoint Research said major electronics makers are now picking up the pace and taking advantage of local incentives to diversify capacity globally. They said this multi-year effort actually began before the COVID-19 pandemic and the zero-COVID policy hit the Chinese economy hard. Apple partner Foxconn could shift 30% of its production capacity to these Asian countries and Brazil. Foxconn, a leading Taiwanese foundry, reported an 11.4% drop in revenue in November 2022. The company operates the world's largest iPhone assembly plant in the city of Zhengzhou. The plant was locked down by authorities in November 2022 after an outbreak affected shipments of the iPhone 14 series. Two analysts cautioned that there won't be an immediate manufacturing heavyweight that can replace China, but companies such as Han Hai, the parent company of Foxconn, and Pegatron are looking for greater diversity in their locations, hoping to handle more of the final assembly and packaging of their products outside of China. The report said, Vietnam's labor force offers lower labor costs than China's. Although it still lacks the capacity to produce iPhones, it has attracted 21 Apple suppliers to operate there. According to Counterpoint Research, the number of smartphones produced in India rose 16% to more than 44 million in the second quarter of 2022. Apple is making the iPhone more modular, making production transferable across facilities. This suggests that the company is doing its best to reduce its reliance on individual assembly plants or senior assembly employees. Two analysts also said that the iPhone 14 and iPhone 14 Plus have become significantly less difficult to produce. This also makes it possible for the Indian factory to produce the iPhone 14 almost simultaneously with the Chinese factory. The Wall Street Journal published a report in October 2022 that explored the difficulty and the inevitability of uncoupling from China. The report tells the story of Jacob Rothman, a 49-year-old American businessman who owns a manufacturing company in China. The U.S. entrepreneur said that with a supply chain built over 30 years as sophisticated as a Swiss watch, disconnecting from the world's second largest economy would be a long, difficult, and costly process. Sites outside of China have their disadvantages. Cambodia and Vietnam have much smaller production capacities and populations. Vietnam's factories are already very crowded, with limited space available. Turkey's high-tech factories are glamorous but plagued by rampant inflation which complicates cost and pricing management. India has great potential but needs to improve its infrastructure, such as better roads. Arguably, no other country can compete with the sheer size and maturity of China's infrastructure to bring together the right factories, people, equipment, and raw material supplies. But the uncoupling of foreign companies from China will eventually begin to take place, little by little. As trade tensions escalated during the Trump administration, a number of manufacturing companies including Crocs Shoes, Yeti Beer Coolers, Roomba Vacuum Cleaners, and GoPro Camera Makers moved production lines away from China. New York perfume seller Interperfumes Incorporated decided to move its operations back to the U.S. after production at its Shanghai plant was disrupted during the new coronavirus outbreak. Rothman said he doesn't want to leave the country, having lived in China for 20 years, but if he has to, he will have to leave. 
The top brass of the CCP is clearly feeling the threat of China's shaky position as the world's factory. Regional governments are also anxious and are holding various trade shows at the risk of an epidemic outbreak. This is the International Tropical Agricultural Products Winter Trade Fair held in Hainan Province from December 15th to 18th, 2022. Through this fair, we can better enhance the popularity and brand influence of Hainan's high-quality agricultural products and promote better accessibility of Hainan's agricultural products to both domestic and overseas markets. By doing so, we can help promote industry exchanges, expand sales channels for agricultural products and enable Hainan's agriculture to achieve high-quality development. Faced with a sharp decline in foreign trade orders, a number of China's major export provinces or cities have been instructed by the local government to organize massive foreign trade enterprises to charter flights to exhibit and visit foreign countries to grab orders and markets. This is the first time since the outbreak of the epidemic in 2020 that a large number of foreign trade missions have been organized by officials to go abroad. For example, the Guangdong provincial government and the municipal governments of Foshan, Guangzhou and Shenzhen have organized from the end of October to Asian, Europe and Southeast Asian countries to grab orders. The cost of chartered flights to exhibitors abroad is subsidized and Shenzhen subsidizes up to 80% of the round-trip airfare. In December, Zhejiang province dispatched a single-order snatching mission to Germany and France and subsequently plans to organize more than 10,000 enterprises to participate in economic and trade activities abroad. The manufacturing town of Suzhou, Jiangsu province, organized a delegation to France and Germany in December 2022. Nanjing has organized hundreds of enterprises to visit abroad since September 2022 providing airfare subsidies in addition to expediting services for business groups for overseas trips and other incentives. Sichuan province issued a document in October to enterprises to use internationally renowned exhibitions and other activities to obtain orders. The province organized 31 foreign trade enterprises to Europe in December to snatch orders. The CCP allows a large number of foreign trade missions to go abroad at this time, which probably means that China's foreign exchange reserves are in dire straits and shows that the Chinese market has lost its ability to attract foreign investment and can only send enterprises out to seek foreign investment.